the very windy west coast in the brand new Mahindra Scorpio N. They say it's better than the old one to the nth degree. And we're gonna be driving it, giving you a tour and doing some off-road driving as well. Let's go. Let's start with the color of this interior. It's a dark brown chocolatey sort of color with black highlights and silver trim. It gives it the usual hardy feeling that you get with Mahindra, so it's quite utilitarian and so is this leatherette as well. You've got two USB ports, wireless charging, and an infotainment system that is eight inches on the dash over here. The boxy Mahindra is taller and wider than a Fortuner, so it does feel quite spacious on the front seats, but let's find out what it's like in the back. Rear seat legroom is ample and so is headroom, at least for someone my size. You've also got your own little vent system over here and USB port for the back seat. With body on frame cars, there are sacrifices to be made and one of those sacrifices is on the back row of seats over here. Because this is shorter than some of its rivals and some of the competition, it's not the most spacious at the back here, but then again, which seven seater is? The XUV 700 sister car though is a little bit more spacious than this one and you also don't get vents at the back. So let's take a look at what the new Scorpio N looks like from the outside. And remember, this is an all new model from the ground up. In the front here, you've got LED lights and you've also got the Audi-esque style indicators over there with daytime running lights at the bottom. Wheel sizes range from 17 to 18 inches and this is the diamond cut 18 inch wheel. Then you've got these side soles for protection that runs all the way to the back. You've got keyless entry and chrome inserts, functional roof rails on the top. Further back, you've got my favorite feature, the Scorpion Sting over here. And I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's kind of supposed to represent a scorpion if this is what a scorpion looks like. At the back, you've got this big wide swinging door and a relatively attractive looking rear. This year does give me Volvo vibes, very similar to Volvo's XC90, which is not a bad thing. Now that we are driving in the city, I start to get used to this big wide windscreen of here and that helps with visibility a lot. It's also one of the safest body on frame cars ever tested by Global Inca. It's got tire pressure monitors, it's got tire temperature monitors and a bunch of other in-house features built into the car. It's also got some sophisticated suspension technology that's supposed to make the car feel the road better and also absorb the shock from the road better. It's got some safety tech that's pretty cool like brake fall so when you jump off the power quite quickly and get onto the brakes abruptly then the brake discs and the system is already activated and ready to go. It also has brake wipe. It actually wipes the brake disc clean when it picks up that the rain sensors have picked up rain. Overtaking torque is there when you need it. To give you an idea, this one comes with 128 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque. A Fortuna has 110 kilowatts and also 400 newton meters of torque. And speaking of this engine, it's really good and pulls so well. Torque is available from under 2000 RPM and it feels nimble and light on its feet, does this car. So even though 128 kilowatts doesn't sound like much, the 400 newtons is over enough to lug this big guy. Down. This 
car has proper 4x4 technology under the skin. So it's a rear-wheel drive biased chassis that can activate into four-wheel drive. It also has a bunch of safety features like trash control and stability control, rollover mitigation, etc. And there's a lot happening under the skin here. It's got a mechanical locking differential and an electronic locking differential. It really is very capable off-road and very competent on the road as well. It's not perfect, but for 465,000 starting for the 4x2, it's not supposed to be. It offers a lot more than many other cars for the price, and it kind of doesn't have any competition other than used Toyota Fortuners. This one, however, comes with a five-year warranty and service plan. Should you give it a chance? Well, I've given it the chance, and it's won me over in some ways. And I think the Mahindra brand has won many of you over too. Mahindra is here, folks. It's here to stay. Watch out for these on our roads very soon. Welcome back to Ignition GT. The Mahindra Scorpio has established a reputation as a rugged, no-nonsense SUV with a proven powertrain and unbeatable value. The new version adds more contemporary styling and a sophisticated cabin to the mix, but is that enough to win over ever more discerning SUV buyers? But I wonder if this came out in the press conference that you guys had on the launch. I saw that this vehicle was co-designed by the people at Pininfarina. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pininfarina was yep. part of the design team that designed the Scorpio N. Yeah. Now, someone who drives a Scorpio N can pull up to a Ferrari, Ferrari. guy and say, listen, eh, same design, guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think from you're gonna get... From the same design studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just saying, you're just saying. <laughs> what were your guys' initial impressions on the car? Um, so, I think, for me, the Mahindra brand, like you mentioned earlier, um, it's made a lot of strides in South Africa, right? Um, mm -hmm. As, um, you know, making these agricultural vehicles, um, even the SUVs, even the outgoing at Scorpio N, they, these were loved by people who are within the farms. You don't see much of them within the city. Yeah. I think it's people who, who know, okay, I'm buying a Mahindra for a reason. Mm -hmm. And now, like, it's appealing. We saw that in the XUV 7 double manual. Really good looking. And now, this is also just as good looking. I think a 2.2 liter, that, a diesel engine that they have at Mahindra is a gem. Yeah. And we've seen it within the entire range from the um, smaller XUV um, 300 mm. up until um, obviously uh, now yes. they're Scorpio N. That's yes. the MOC engine. The MOC engine, yes. Yeah, the wow. diesel engine is perfect. It's got enough torque, yeah. just perfect. I mean, 129 kilowatts is not much, right? But the torque is amazing. It's like 400 newtons. Yeah. Yes, 400 newtons. Yeah. Meters, yeah, 400 newtons at the end of the day. And I mean, now I hear that this is the only engine that they're offering in that yeah. vehicle. Whereas with the XUV, they were only offering a petrol, petrol motor yeah. with this. So do you think that this is going to, you know, do what it needs to do for pleasing that market? Mahindra's been developing this engine for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. Mahindra's a very popular brand in India. Mm. And Indian driving conditions are pretty, like, freaking serious. Mm. So this car needs to be rugged okay. and built to last. Yeah. And the way that we tested these cars, it was like 40 degrees. Yeah. And we were just giving this thing horns. And, and it was didn't not disappointing. Not disappointing see, at all. That's, that's what we like to hear because you mentioned quite an important point saying that you don't see a lot of the Mahindras in the city. Mm. And you don't. When you start going to your outlying areas, you go to the heart of beer sports, yeah. you go out to your winelands and all that. And then you can start seeing that, hold, hold on a second, people drive these cars yeah. here. What do you think the brand needs to do in terms of getting more city folk, so to speak, to actually experience their vehicles? Because jumping in this new Scorpio N now, it's quite plush, actually. Yeah, it's very plush. plush. Yeah, the, I mean, the materials are beautiful. Um, we're not even just the same. I mean, that Sony sound system that they have in there, everything is just really the perfect There's still stretch. buttons. Yeah, yeah. they have buttons. to operate yeah. everything exactly. through a screen. So yeah, yeah. I think it's easy to use. It's versatile. The brand just needs to really work more in terms of their marketing. Uh, mm. I think, obviously, the marketing strategies um, we've seen with different companies also. I mean, think about Stellantis. Mm. They make great vehicle, but their marketing strategies not that great, hence we don't see the cars on the road. Um, for me, I think that this car comes in also at the right price, yeah. especially considering the fact that from a ladder frame SUV perspective, the mainstay stuff is quite expensive, you know, and Everest now costs you like 900,000 Rand starting. Yeah, it's you know, Fortune is also going to cost you quite a bit of money, but I look at this and I think, wow, you know, you're coming in at a decent pricing um, bracket 
And for me, what do you think that's going to do for the likes of those who are considering your Havals and considering your cherries? Do you think the Mahindra might just pull them back and say, stick to what you know? Perhaps. I think we actually might end up getting people opting for the Scorpio N mm. rather than the XUV700 because mm. you get that whole adventure SUV vibe. And yeah. what I like about this is it has a watts linkage to rear suspension. Mm. So it might be on a ladder frame, but the implementation of that means that it irons out the, the bumps, the, the bumps yeah. quite well, yeah. Yes, yes. Question is now, from a competition like competition perspective, yeah. the rivals, do you think that this car has got what it takes to unseat the rivals? I mean, not necessarily unseat, um, but I think it's definitely taking it up to, to the competition. Yeah. And now the looks as well. They've Mahindra always used to be sketchy in terms of looks, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> I think, um, they always just used to be... It wasn't the greatest. They yeah. wasn't the great, but I think right now from the uh, XUV300, XUV700, yes. the mm. Scorpio, and their looks, they look really good. For me, the consumer always needs to come first. And the fact that we've got you know, these products out there that are consumer ready, I think that works. I think it definitely works. Yeah.